First of all, I want to say something that's going to be really contradictory um, considering the fact that I'm doing a video about showing my gear closet but gear literally doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things and it honestly took me this extensive amount of like spontaneous purchases to realise I don't even use half the stuff anymore like my everyday gear is practically this it's just a tripod, my FX3, a Sennheiser MKE 600 and my Rode Wireless Pros that's literally it and I could probably count in one hand the amount of times I've used some of the gear in the back but saying that they do really come in handy when you really do need them let me show you what I have let's start with the audio gear so before I used to vlog a bunch so shotgun mics were ideal for me this was the Rode Wireless Pro Plus and then I suddenly switched to the Sennheiser MKE 600 that's on the FX3 right now just because that's got an XLR handle and then it came to a point where I was shooting more documentary style videos where shotgun mics just weren't capturing the sound as well so that's when I started making a move to wireless microphones I started off with the Rode Wireless Go 2 these were actually really great um, the only one downside was as you can see they don't really come in a charging case so I forgot to charge these a lot and then came these the Hollyland Lark Max Hollyland sent me these they actually sent me two of these these are amazing microphones so as you can see they come in a charging case and yeah these just look really nice as you can see they look very premium and then the box comes in a case itself where it's got a lot of accessories for it like um audio cables wind muffs and metal necklaces because these are magnetic but yeah these were really cool and i ran these for quite a while then i purchased the red wireless pros which come in a certain carry case and of course i was tempted by that 32 bit flow and finally they have the home charging port so these stay charged and it's easy to charge all three because i just got to charge the case and then sony sent over these mics these are awesome sony shotgun mics and i did videos on them and these shotgun mics are actually pretty powerful they can pick up sound from a good distance away and especially this one where it has eight different audio modes but yeah these are what i'm rocking now with my zve one speaking of zve one this is my other camera apart from the sony fx3 so sony sent this over to me and this is just as good as the FX3, so I love this because it's so compact. So I'm using this in spaces where I'm a little bit more conscious and I don't want to be carrying my huge FX3 rig around, and this would do just as well. Speaking of Sony ZV-E1, I also have the handle for it, which is an awesome little tripod, and I could control the camera functions via here, so it's really great for vlogging. Another thing I have is lighting, so I'm always trying to work on my lighting techniques because I'm not the best at it, so... I've always been trying to work on my lighting techniques that's why i have a bunch of these just so i can kind of prop these up in different angles but this is what i started with it was just a newer light from amazon so this was pretty cheap then came these tiny small rig video lights so which were cool these were about like 15 pounds a piece and these come in handy because these are really really bright and then recently loomcube sent over their rgb panel pro these are much bigger and i love how it's kind of got like this diffuser on top of it so as you can see there and that can diffuse the light, um, kind of gives like softer lighting. So this is what I've been using on the regular. And these are also in the kit. These are the Loom Cube Studio Panels and they sent these over. And these are amazing because these are wireless powered. So I'm using these when I'm filming outside or when I don't have access to power, but these also get pretty bright. So I love these studio panels. So I use this duo often as either a fill light or a backlight. Um, sometimes I use it as a source light. Though when I'm home, I use the big Godox SL100B one, but I love these because these are pretty lightweight. Oh, another thing I have is the 40 watt LED cube from Alanzi. So they also sent these over. And yeah, this is a powerful spotlight for its size. And it also comes with a soft box, basically. And I use these when I'm also out and about and I'm not carrying this big thing. And another thing I have is this home gimbal. And I love this because it's got an attachable camera um, and it's got an AI tracker built in as well as an RGB LED light, which is cool. Um, I don't use this too often just because my FX3 is too heavy so I use this the ZVE one but most of the time I am shooting handheld but I use this when I want tracking shots and I'm filming by myself and this can just follow me as I walk around which is pretty cool. Now on to some of the beefy camera rig items which I put on my FX3. So sometimes when I want to act a little bit extra and have a massive rig, I mount my FX3 to this rail as well as the V-mount battery. I'm going to do a future video on this. But yeah, I use a small rig battery, the 99 one, um, and this powers quite a lot. And yeah, I haven't charged this in like a month and it's still got 91% battery um, when I'm not using it. But yeah, this has a really compact and sleek design and can power up a lot of the items in the rig. And one of those items are my wireless follow focus. So when I'm shooting with my cinema camera, which is manual focus only, and I'm shooting alone, this is what I use. And again, I can power this stuff using the V-mount battery that I just showed. And I put this handle on the follow focus so I can put my monitors. Speaking of monitors, this is what I started with. So I still have this. This is a 
Field Road Master. This was a pretty cheap one from Amazon and this actually served me well for quite a lot of years but this was pretty basic as it only mirrored video. And then recently this year I then upgraded to the Adamo Shinobi. Um, this was really awesome as you can see it's pretty sturdy. But yeah, this had everything that you want in monitors like false color, peaking, LUT previews. And obviously when I'm shooting alone I attach these Hollyland wireless transmitters. So I'd have one on the rig, which is a transmitter, and one being the receiver. And this setup is basically what I have on hand, basically being my own assistant. Which brings us to the latest monitor which Holy Land sent me, is the Holy Land Mars M1. And this has a built-in receiver. So now I don't have to carry this receiver along, because this gets bulky, as you can see. Now here, I can just have the monitor along with my follow focus, and just of course the transmitter connecting this camera. And again, this has everything you need, like LUT previews, false color, peaking. Great screen, by the way. So this is what I've been using recently because it's just really bright. And again, it's got a built-in receivers, so I no longer have to basically mount these around, which is pretty cool. And another thing for the FX3 I have, which is a pretty pointless thing that I brought was the map box. Um, I thought having it would make me look really cool, but then I realized, it's just a pain to carry, it makes my rig so much bigger. And I've had this roller coaster of a time of going like, wanted a bigger rig to wanting a smaller rig. And then I'm like, no, I want a bigger rig to look cool again. Then I realized I want a smaller rig to be more efficient. But yeah, it's a never ending cycle. I ended up buying this very expensive small rig filter. It's an ND filter to slide into the matte box. Again, probably didn't need it, but it was one of those things where I'm just a shopaholic when it comes to gear. And right now I'm not currently using this because I'm only filming for like stuff like YouTube and Reels and TikToks. But, but when I do shoot my more narrative content on my short films, I'd definitely be using this stuff. I actually have this newer teleprompter. So this was like my first ever brand deal. But yeah, this is really handy. This is like a teleprompter. Um, I should be using this now because I can see I'm always looking at that screen. But if I were to kind of like plan my scripts in advance, I would use a teleprompter. But at the moment, I just kind of freeball it. Um, yeah, and teleprompter is really handy because it kind of makes me look like I know what I'm saying. Some more gear I have are my stills cameras. I actually had this Fuji XA2 as one of my first ever cameras that I brought. And I used to be into photography a lot and this held me really well. And I actually vlogged on this thing. So this was actually the start to my content creating. And last year I also managed to get my hands on the really coveted X100V. I don't use this as often as I would like to. Um, which now saying that, I think I'd like to change that. Yeah, I'm gonna try to bring this along more and take more photos. And then I have my lenses. I have the TT Artisans 11mm, so I use these for my wide angles. Then I have a Mamika 50mm Cine lens. Um, this is what I was planning to shoot, the 50mm challenge in. Um, I still will, but as I'm kind of just getting to the gripes of it, um, it's just so hard to film um, just because it's fully manual and yeah, once I've sussed it out, I'm gonna be using this bad boy. Yeah, this wooden tray was kind of inspired by a little to the left. Um, I don't know if you, I don't know if you've heard of the game, but it's kind of like this organization game. So I've tried to organize everything here. So it's stuff like the batteries, the the HDMI's, the spec cameras, the audio recorders. You've got USB C's, you've got lav mics, you've got micro USBs, you've got adapters for when I'm traveling, and then I've got a bunch of like bolts and screws and trinkets for the rig but yeah and yeah this is kind of like the DIY kit which is cool yeah then I have these little accessories so in this box is the kind of more lens focus accessories so lens caps lens hoods filters macro adapters um this one's a vertical to horizontal mount um which I love by the way this one's a flash for the Fuji X100V and then this slot right here is for my action cameras. Yeah, I had the Fatec action camera gimbal and this is pretty cool because it's magnetic. But I always keep it there, it kind of looks like CCTV. So I use that sometimes for certain angles, creative angles that I want. But my main action camera is the Insta360 GO 3. Um, I brought these on a trip to Morocco. I love this, again, I don't use it enough. It's one of them spontaneous buys and I was kind of getting FOMO, so I ended up buying it. But yeah, until I use that more often, then I'm not gonna find a need to upgrade my action camera. And yeah, this box is more of the rig box, so it's got like little accessories like clamps. You have mounts, you have um, lighting mounts. I have like arms, articulating arms, um, quick release plates. But yeah, everything that I need to kind of get creative angles. And that's why I have a lot of this stuff, because there was that one point where I was very into POV shots. Shout out Colt, because he's the king of POV shots. And yeah, thanks Colt for making me spend some money. Oh, and speaking of creators that made me spend money, shout out to Life Arisa for making me buy this slider. When she showed it on her video on how to make things cinematic, I was like, yep, I have to have that because I honestly didn't know about it. Um, this was from newer. This was around like 200 pounds. I've used these for like some opening shots. And again, 
I want to use this more often. Um, I want to make use of it because otherwise it's just sitting here collecting dust. Um, but yeah, future content with this. And that pretty much is it for my gear. And that's pretty much it for the gear closet. As you can see, 90% of those things I rarely use. And I'm trying to push myself to use because I don't want to put my money to waste. And like fun fact, with a lot of my recent stuff in the past couple of months, I haven't used one single piece from here. So yeah, that does kind of show gear isn't everything. I feel like I had to buy this stuff to kind of learn the mistake of what I do need and what I don't need. And hopefully in this channel, I can do more of this gear stuff so I can help you all decide if you do or do not need certain pieces of gear, um, just so you guys don't end up wasting your money on gear that you don't need. And yeah, that's pretty much it. And I guess until the next gear purchase.